Alright guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the highly anticipated Commander Bly action figure from Hasbro Star Wars, the Black Series. And my gosh guys, what a really dope figure, man. Just from the paint apps to the sculpt to the accessories you get, he's a very fun piece to have in the collection. So, without further ado, let's take a look at his packaging. So, as you would expect, it is the standard Black Series packaging. You can see your clone Commander Bly. Nice picture of Commander Bly there. He is action figure 104 in the Black Series, called Commander Bly. On the other side, you can see his name again. And on the bottom, you have some, what is that? Some uh, random stuff in the barcode, made in China, different logos and stuff. A little warning here I should mention too. It's for 4 and up. And a Star Wars Black Series on the top. And last but not least, there is a little bio on the back of the box here which I will zoom in here and show you and you can pause it and read it if you wish. Okay so firstly he comes with two little blaster type pistols um, they're exactly the same they're just a flat black color with a pretty nice sculpt you can see here exactly the same and they look pretty cool. And then for his last accessory we get a standard blaster that we have seen before with many other figures and it is very nicely sculpted. So first things first with Commander Bly here with these pistols you can see that there's little holsters right here as you can see and you can just kind of duck those in the holsters and they fit in there really snug. They definitely are not going to fall out easy so you can definitely mess around with this guy and not be worried about those falling out and uh, missing them. And then the most important aspect of this probably is can he even hold these blasters? considering they're so small. And I'll say this, um, he can, but it is a little bit ugly looking in my opinion, considering the trigger finger sticks really, really far out. So it doesn't really want to go in that holster, that uh, little trigger too well. It looks kind of awkward, but here you can see I got it in. And that looks okay, if I can get this to focus here for you guys. It looks decent. But the other hand cannot hold the gun at all. It does not have a trigger finger. All the fingers are sculpted together, as far as I can see. And if they're not, they're definitely very, very stiff. The hands are very firm. So it's really tough to get that gun in there. And when you do, it just doesn't. It looks awkward, in my opinion. I don't really like how it looks. And then he does hold the rifle decently. It is a little awkward. You've got to fidget with him a little bit. And it's a very stiff way he holds it. There isn't a lot of room for rotation unless you're moving him on his little diaphragm swivel here. But, um... Aside from that, he holds the gun well, at least with the trigger finger. This hand here that holds the barrel of the gun is incredibly stiff, so that takes a little bit to get on the rifle. So it would be nice if that plastic was a little bit softer and easier to move around so you could really get him to hold the gun. So taking a look at Commander Bly himself, the figure in his uh, full aesthetic here, he just looks fantastic. Man, I absolutely love the paintwork on him. I love the different uh, shading of brown, and it's kind of dirty looking here. As you can see, there's a little bit of smudging on the brown there. I hope you guys can see that in the light. Yeah, you can. And just the brown going down, nice stripe work here. Nice soft plastic, I should mention. This is a softer plastic that looks really clean on there. I absolutely love it. It's molded to his body very well. It doesn't look awkward at all, so that's a very nice touch. And yeah, man, just the different shades of brown here. There's three different shades going on, I think. No, I could be wrong. Two, maybe? This brown looks a little bit lighter than this brown, but nah, maybe it's just the lighting. This one definitely looks a little bit darker, though. In the lightings, it varies. But you got some different hues of brown going on, especially because this is a, a, it has a lighter brown here and then a darker brown under it, so it kind of looks like it's dirty. And on the bottom feet here, you can see it's a, also a dirty kind of brown, too. And we have this nice yellow color all throughout. I really like that yellow. Some nice metallics, too, on the face gear. You can see there are very nice metallics. It's black and little details all throughout, man. Very nicely sculpted. He is the typical uh, clone trooper body mold. He's uh, the same body mold as uh, Commander Fox, I believe. I'll grab that figure really quick. Okay, so here they are together. And I believe, for the most part, they're pretty much exactly the same figure. They have some different cloth here. It's nice that they pay attention to detail like that and give you some different stuff too. Because they probably could have just reused this cloth and maybe gave it a different color or something. But they, uh, they pay attention to little details like that. I really love these this piece he came with. And I absolutely love the headgear too. 
But um, aside from that, you can see compared to him, they're exactly the same size, pretty much exactly the same body mold. And you know, I'd expect them to do that considering they're both clone commanders. And here he is next to clone commander Kenobi, and I want to say Kenobi is a little bit shorter, maybe just a tiny bit. But for the most part, they're they're pretty similar in height, and once again, they have the same exact body mold here, I believe. Yeah, they do. And I should mention too, his little headgear, the little eyepiece, is removable. It has two little pegs here, and you can just kind of pop it on like that. Just make sure you got it on the right side here. This pan goes on the left, and it just kind of pops back on very easy. And I love too how they include that little like rivet right there in that piece of the helmet. You can just kind of slide it up. And it stays on top of his head pretty nicely. The, my favorite thing about this guy is probably the helmet, man. That's really unique, and it just looks fantastic. And I really love this piece here. All in all, this guy is just really nicely done, man. Very, very well done altogether. I'll give you a nice rotation. Another thing I want to mention, too, is uh, this belt is sculpted nice, but what's really strange is you can see this, this piece here, uh, the top part of this cloth. And I don't know if that's supposed to be showing or not. I mean, it's pretty thick, so I feel like it's kind of inevitable. Let me know if your Commander Bly figure has that showing. Because mine definitely does, and it's really, really obvious. But, I mean, it doesn't bother me too much. Hopefully it doesn't bother you. Because it does look nice for the most part. And I should mention, too, he has this little piece coming down off of this... Uh, piece going around his collarbone too. I'm not sure what that is, some kind of ammunition or something, but it looks really nice. It's a nice detail, man. And it almost looks like it's coming down and connecting to his belt. It's kind of hidden, so that's a very nice touch. So yeah, Commander Bly, very nice figure, nice detail, nice um, dirtying of the armor and stuff. Very cool. So lastly, to take a look at his articulation, his head goes down, not far back, not far um, really no neck pivot there. It's just a really big, thick helmet. It does have a rotation. The joint is very tight, though. The arms do go out pretty far. They aren't really hindered by this piece on his collar there. Forward and back, there is a little bit of a swivel there, as you can see, at the forearm, or not the forearm, the bicep there, the shoulder. And then there is a double jointed elbow, which is kind of hindered by this, uh, elbow pad, but that's okay. And then there is rotation here in the wrist and a hinge so you can hold the gun nicely. And in this hand, same articulation, everything, but there is a hinge that points forward like that. Oh, sorry, if you can hear my cat. He is needy. And it kind of looks like he has a broken arm, so that's cool. And there is a swivel here at the abdomen, the diaphragm. He can go back pretty far, forward pretty far side to side and there is a rotation there there is like no waist articulation at all which isn't a complaint really of mine because the swivel is nice especially because man that articulation is really well hidden it just looks like a piece of armor and it's utilized very nicely i dig that the legs go out pretty far forward and back there is a rotation here at the thigh there's double jointed knees which are very nicely done then there's a little hinge here at the foot but that's, oh hey, the gun fell out. It's very tight, and there is an ankle pivot here, but no real rotation in the foot otherwise. So this guy is very articulated, and the articulation for the most part, aside from in the elbows here and these uh, legs, is really, really well hidden, man. I'll say this too, the pegs are kind of really well hidden in those arms there. And I, like I said, I've said it in previous reviews, I really like when the uh, articulation, the posing of figures looks organic, obviously, as organic as it could be. For a $20 figure, you can only expect so much, I guess, but it's nice to see them really go the extra mile and make sure that articulation is hidden, like in this piece here. I really love that. All right, guys, so that's my review of Commander Bly. I will say he is a really, really cool figure. He's one of my favorite clones I own. Uh, I really love all the paint work on him. They did fantastic. I love the metallics all throughout, the different cloth, all the, the dirting of the gear, the different shades of brown. Um, everything about this guy is really fantastic. Would I have liked to see the weapons paint a little better, maybe some scuffing? Absolutely. I'll probably include some later myself. But this guy, all in all, for $20 is absolutely worth it, man. He's fantastic. I picked him up at GameStop, so it was a little over 20 bucks. so that's kind of a bummer. 
but he was worth it. I think he was definitely worth every dollar. He's very articulated. The articulation is really well hidden, I guess, well implemented and utilized. So it's a beautiful figure, in my opinion. I definitely think you should own him. Um, no reason not to. He's a very nice figure. I definitely wouldn't compromise. He's, he's a cool figure. And I'm sure he'll be worth quite a few dollars once he is off uh, the sales floor. So I definitely recommend buying him. Anyways, thank you for watching this review. I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you like it. I hope you subscribe. I hope you comment. I'd like to hear from you. And please, please subscribe. Stay tuned for more. There's more reviews coming. I did buy the B1 Battle Droid, too, as well. So I'll definitely have a review of him coming up soon. And, uh, yeah, again, I love this figure, and I hope you guys enjoy him if you buy him. Otherwise, um, keep collecting, guys, and thanks for watching. Peace.